Hey Mark. Hey Andre. How are you? I'm wonderful. Welcome to ISI. Yeah, special. <laughs> yeah, this is, guys, you are in for an absolute treat today. We have Mark L. Powell, um, a very dear friend of mine who has recently completed their foundation love journey. And I just had to get him on to let you guys hear his amazing transformation mm -hmm. testimony with, you know, in his own words. Um, in the background, we've got uh, Strongholds from the Holy Place, Wonderful. which is a testimony to our friendship. Um, when did we, when did we record the Holy um, Place? It was, it was um, done in 2000, it went out in 2004. 2004. So it must have been we're giving away our age here you know well, like like yeah like let's let's not say anymore no. but it was a great album and you can still download it um and get at me we'll let you know we can download it or you can find the link below somewhere yeah. all right so that's the holy place and this is mark l powell it's an absolute honor to have you here with us today on isi sharing your testimony um, you know, Mark, I, I want to just go straight in. You like, don't, please do. give us, give us a bit of your backstory. So, you know, people who don't know you, they don't know what you've been through. Can you give us a bit of your, of your backstory? Um, where can I start? Do you, you mean the negative stuff or? Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. Let, let them know how far you've come. Cause this has been, this has been a journey for you. This has okay. been a, a, a long journey. Okay, so after just... completing the Holy Place 2004, 2006, um, I went through some time of depression, mm -hmm. really bad depression. Yeah. Um, I was given lithium and I was diagnosed with bipolar right. in 2006 mm -hmm. and um, told I would, I'd be on medication for life. Okay. And, um, and I had a high period in my life in 2002. So for those who don't understand a high period, what, what does that mean? Well, high period, is, you're so high that you can get, you know, it, it means that you can, when you're high, you can go through a long time of, okay, if you're very spiritual, you can go through a long time of prayer. I can pray for hours mm. and hours. I'll give you an instant. In like 2000, I went to San Tropez and I prayed in the spirit for about 10 hours. Straight? Straight. The only time I ceased was when I was refueling wow. petrol. So it means you have a you can you have a you can put things together, and things are quite rapid, and so you can be very entrepreneurial, mm -hmm. and you want to do great things. Mm. You know, you really want to. It's extreme. Mm. It's a very it's a gift that I think is it's, it's um what's the guy's name who has it famous guy I can't remember his name now anyway, mm. but a lot of famous people loved. Love the um, the high part of it. Kanye yeah. is the low part of it. Kanye West. Is it yeah, Kanye he, West? Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye said West. It, he, he's got some issues with it. And so a lot of people love the high side, mm. but it's the low side. Wow. Right. I mean, you can be so gifted and you can create so many, so much things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can operate many things at once, mm. like I do now. Yeah. I can operate many, many different things. At once, yeah. But the, the low side is extreme. So what, what, give me a little, give me an example of the low side. Well, the low side is that I've had periods of depression where I couldn't get out of bed. Uh, you know, I, I never knew depression. Depression came, I suppose, 2006, I would say. But I never, I was always a kind of a high spirit person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd have everything under control. And all of a sudden I faced depression where I didn't want to, I didn't want to be here. Mm. You know, I had meth, you know, I, I, I wanted to end my life, really. Okay. And I didn't want to be here at all. So did you actually try to end your life? Yeah, I tried to, I tried to um, jump off a bridge. I tried to, um, I was walking with a rope. I tried to hang myself. I remember I spent three days in that, in that, in that attic, hiding from the world, because I just still want to be here. Mm. It was really, really desperate. I, I, my prayers were a different kind of prayer. You know, Lord, just take my life. You know, I've mm. had enough. You know, mm. 
and it was really really desperate you know? so that's the extreme highs and lows of bipolar mm. that that you can experience and i guess anybody who's you know maybe suffered with bipolar or or experienced bipolar you know make sure you get the help that you need yeah you know? i mean medication works yeah. i mean the problem is is that you're given a cocktail mm. and so i was given all kinds of different medication the worst medication i had experience was lithium right lithium really made me feel depressed wow i wanted to kill myself so the medication that was supposed to help you actually yeah. made you feel worse yeah lithium was the worst okay because you're in a cocktail dies it has i mean i went through a cocktail of different types of medication wow because they're trying it's like trial and error because yeah. don't forget it's a mood suppressor and they don't so know what works particularly right. well for you and, and it's all about trying to um control your moods right okay yeah. so when you when you experience these things and you know you've gone through i know we've spoken at length mm. and you've gone through like long periods of like no sleep and well yeah because when we started the, the coaching <laughs> i had been on a 50 day period of lack of sleep 50 days and still able to go to work every day 50 days of no sleep well, and still well, able like, to... I can power nap. I can have an hour and or an hour and a half. 50 days. Nap. I'm still on the 50 days. Like, yeah. guys, I really want you to just... And, and this is why I wanted you to do this. Because I really want you guys to understand the powerful thing that is taking place at ISI with, mm -hmm. with what we're doing mm -hmm. here. And, you know, I, I, can, I can testify that when Mark came in his first session... Actually, I want to show you a little something. Mm -hmm. A little... A little clip of you. I think this was your first session. Mm. Well, she had an affair. And, uh, so we, you were telling me your, affair. you were telling me your mm. story, mm. and mm. you know it. And this, this was a very I deep story yeah. that you that you um, shared, and like, you know, just even uh, guys. Uh, hold on, I don't know if I can make the screen. So, so this was Mark in his session. Oh, up here, right? Mm -hmm. There, down a bit. There, this was Mark on his session. And you can literally see the difference in his yeah. face. Like, I I can, I, I screenshot you um, in your session. Sorry, mm -hmm. guys, I just want to. And I know it's not the best picture, but it's, a, it's, it's, this is seven weeks ago. Mark, yeah. I want you to have a look. This was you. Seven yeah, weeks I mean, ago. I've been going through, I've gone through an awesome deliverance. It's mm. like, mm. seriously, like, I've can you delivered. see? Mm. It's a big difference, right? So I'm not just, I'm not just gassing up myself and saying, you know, it's, it's a really big difference. Mm. And Mark, like when you walked in today, I almost like just, just didn't recognize you. Like well, I've seen the changes over mm. the few weeks mm. and, you know, I, I, I just had to, say like god you're so amazing you know yeah. with i him. think you know to be honest i i that 50 day period is it's all about standing in the gap mm. and praying mm. for a lot of people mm -hmm. so you're taking on people's issues mm -hmm. people that are struggling with um marriages mm -hmm. marriage issues people that are struggling with depression mm -hmm. people that are struggling with wanting to kill themselves mm -hmm. and because i've been through so you things. were praying for all of these people yeah, at that time? Yeah, I'm okay. praying for a lot of people. Yeah. I do. And I do stand in the gap for a lot of people. Mm. And so therefore, it, it feels like, you know, we spoke about one thing about um, experience. Mm -hmm. It's just an experience yeah. when you come through at the end. Yeah. Because the same experience I'm, that I've overcome, yeah. I'm now helping people. Yeah. And um, I understand it more than anything else because right. I'm, I'm an overcomer in those periods. Yeah. And I'm, I'm an overcomer in those areas. Yeah. So I was going for a long time of just praying people. But the, the, the main thing is that I had to learn about stop carrying people's burdens. Right. I became a carrier. Right. And I didn't release it to God. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the burden. So maybe you, what you saw on my face there is because I'm carrying too much. Yeah, you were. And through, I, through, the, you know, through the coaching, yeah. I've been able to release that. Amen. Yeah. So, so what made you start the love journey? I said to my wife, I said to Angie, you know, Angie, I'm suffering from, you know, um, a bit of anger issues and I need some counselling. Mm. And that was just a few days before, um, not even a week before I 
that we knew you were a coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know that you were doing coaching. You know, I knew about the holy place, and yeah. I knew you could write beautiful songs, and I knew all that kind of stuff, but did I know you was doing coaching? No, I didn't. And so, I, you know, and, you know, God chose you to coach me and mm -hmm. to counsel me, which is like, for me, awesome. Okay. You know, my journey has been awesome. It's mm. been a seven week of, you know, deliverance, understanding, and just reminding myself it was just an experience that I had to go through. Mm. So talking about it was an experience that you had to go through. How did you feel before you started the journey? Like, how did you feel in yourself? How did you feel, you know, emotionally? How did you feel, you know, how did you feel before? I had a lot going on, you know, I had a, a lot going on. Um, like I said, I had issues with my anger, frustration, issues from the past, mm -hmm. you know, that I needed to move on from. Mm. You know, sometimes you think you moved on, but you just haven't yet. Mm. You know, and um, you know there was issues. Obviously, you know, um, my I'm, I, if I be honest, my childhood wasn't easy. No. You know, because obviously I was abused at seven. I was playing on a railway line at seven years of age, and um, this white guy came and grabbed me and took me into a shed, and abused me. So I remember the pain, and then I remember running home to my mom. Which my mom is like. She is the most loveliest woman on the planet mm. for me. She has, she's my world wife. Mm. I remember going home and, I'm, and my mom, I stopped before I saw my mom and I said, I can't tell her. Wow. Because if I tell her, I'm going to ruin her world. And so from that day, I decided. So at age seven, yeah, you made that decision? Yeah, to not tell wow. her. Wow. And um, what I said to myself was that I'm going to just look after her and be the best you know, retired at the house and, you know, take on responsibilities. But the problem was is that when I, after that um, situation, what, what I found was that my dreams were awesome, mm. but my um, my nightmares were terrible. They were so terrible that I used to wet the bed. Oh, wow. And, you know, it, it was like panic attacks, can't breathe. And it was just the worst nightmares you could have as a seven-year-old. Mm. But... On the other side, it was powerful dreams, mm -hmm. dreams that I'm doing what I'm doing today, mm. you know, just real powerful dreams. Yeah. But I remember having to get up in the morning after I used to wet the bed and then I used to wash my sheets in the morning because of the embarrassment and the shame, put it on the line. And then I used to take my beloved sister, Shreza, oh. to nursery in the morning at seven. So my mom had to do work and stuff like that. But what I used to do, I used to take her to, to nursery in the morning, then go to school. Mm. Now between seven and 10, school for me was a blur mm. because I didn't sleep a lot. Okay. So, the, so even at a young age, you weren't... You weren't no, that's when I developed. See, what happened, that attack caused me to be able to power nap. Right. So I never really slept properly between the ages of seven and 10. Wow. And so school was a blur and it was very, very, very tough. Mm. And... um. Uh, you know, that, that routine was the same routine most nights. I'd go to bed, dream and dream and dream. I used to love dreaming. Mm. You know, they say, you know, okay, I'm born in March. They say Pisces, whether it's true, they're dreamers. But I used to love dreaming. But on the other side of dreaming was the warfare. Now, the uh. warfare was intense. Yeah. And so it's amazing because if I push forward, I've been through a lot of warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, I, am, I believe that I'm a prayer warrior and I no war you know i know what the enemy's devices is because i've been trained from a child mm -hmm. and those nightmares you know that i had came back and you know i was able to maybe have a different handle on them mm. and i'm going back and forth i don't want to do that but you know if i go back to what i went through as a child after the age of 10 i overcame those nightmares mm. and my dreams wasn't as, as high and um you know, that was when I started to, you know, progress better mm. as a child. Wow. So when did you, when were you diagnosed with bipolar? 2006. Okay. So what are we, 2022 now? Mm. That's how many years is that? Quick maths. 14 years. Mm. 14 years. Yeah. 14 um, years, guys. Diagnosed. My doctor, my doctor, you know, I was, 
I went to the doctors and I wasn't feeling great. I was feeling depressed. And my wife, Angela, took me to the doctors. 16 years. 16 years. Oh, sorry, 16. I'm doing bad maths. 16 years. 16 years. I was diagnosed 16 years. And, um, but I went through a lot of periods of not taking medication. Because even though I was diagnosed 16 years, I felt that I was healed. So I went through like seven years of not taking medication. So right. I was taking medication off and on. Are you taking medication now? Yeah, five grams. I probably never saw it before. Before. Five grams. Because I think I should take it. Okay. Just to make sure that um, I don't know why. I mean, I actually feel I don't need to take it, but on the sense of using wisdom, yes, I'm being responsible, it. and yeah. we, and this is what we encourage in ISI. With you know, no matter who comes to us, we encourage you know if you're on medication, mm. keep taking your medication. Yeah. If you've been prescribed it, take it. You, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Andre, and, I'm on five grams. Yeah, that's a right, that's a small dose though, isn't it's it? A, that's a, quite it's a low a very, dose. Because I was on you know bigger grams, but I was on, I'm on five grams of medication as a smooth a mood stabilizer right okay and um um i take that at night mm. and um what benefit it has i don't know but i take it okay because it's sensible yes it is it yeah. is this is good yeah. were you taking your medication properly before you started your coaching um <laughs> not really uh, no really, not really <laughs> I, I wasn't i wasn't taking it you know and i promise you know the difference is that you know i had my coaching, and I promised my wife that I'm taking it, you know, yeah. because she's been through hell with me. Yeah, she, that must be so difficult. You know, it must I've, have been difficult for her. You no, know, it's difficult. You know, I, to be honest, what was difficult for me was the pain I put her through. Right. That was difficult. Mm. There was sometimes, you know, it was really tough because she would feed me in the morning, and then come from work and feed me at night. I couldn't eat. I couldn't get out of bed. You know, I just couldn't get out of bed. So it was really kind of really went to a really low place with 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 the bipolar. Like it really took you to a very. It took me to the extremes of you know, um, you know, my prayers are Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the next time, um, my next um, season will be hell. Oh wow! So I know what hell is like for me personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to hell. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. I, and I've been I to relate. I've been to heaven. Yeah, and I've had balance in between. Yeah, but hell is um, you don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to die. You don't want to live. Yeah, that just must be like so like awful to just wake up every day and just kind of just not want to be there. Like oh, yeah. I've woken up again, yeah. kind of thing. Like. Yeah, I've been to a place where I just you know I prefer just being hell. You know. Mm. So you started your love journey. Yeah. Um, it's seven weeks yeah. and you know we've we've seen we've had a lot of progress and very quick mm -hmm. it's been very very rapid mm -hmm. the progress that I've seen and when did you start to see the results very quickly I mean uh, you know when people start to experience the way you coach you know it's led by the Holy Spirit right mm -hmm. right so absolutely you I am a quick learner, right? If you say something that makes sense to me, I'm I'm, I'm in there. I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah he right. grasped the grasp right. the concepts like right. that, like no right. long thing, just grasp the and concept. I know I needed made a major deliverance mm -hmm. from my past, mm -hmm. real deliverance. Mm. I just I didn't know that it would come so quickly. Because you know I am so free of my past. Mm. Old things have passed away. You know, yeah. so behold, it's a new season Come for me. On. And the new things, new seasons coming for great exploits. Yeah. I just believe that I had to go through what I had to go through yeah. for Sister Thomas now. Yeah. You know, people will understand it. Why, Mark, why would you say that? Go through all that pain. It was worth it. Yeah. Because what I can do for others, I can do more. Come on. And it's more. the experience. Yeah, the experience. You know, it's, it's talking from that place of experience. Yeah. Like when you've all the stuff that you've experienced, for you to sit here now, mm -hmm. it just adds so much weight to yeah. your testimony because yeah. you're not just saying, "Oh, you know, this is great," mm -hmm. but you're like, "I have been to hell and back." Yeah, I mean, and you I'm, know, <laughs> and here I am. I mean, Andre, I've been sectioned five times. Five times. Right. Um, mostly two. I've been sectioned. Five times, so highs, okay, 17, then, then, so high, I would say highs twice, three times, the rest for depression. Mm. 
Really? So the problem is, is that, you know, you get sectioned for depression, which is wrong. Yeah. You get sectioned for highs. Oh, you get sectioned for highs as well? No, highs is right. Because okay. if you're out, if you, if you, if you can't tame yourself, then you should be sectioned. But if you're in depression, you need respite care. Yeah. And St. Mungo's in Bristol, I had respite care. Okay. And that was respite care where you can go home. And it's a different experience. Mm. That's why I would always support that charity. Because okay. What's the name of the charity? St. Mungo's. St. Mungo's. Yeah, I would always support them because I had respite care in Bristol and I was able to go and see my mum. And um, just, and the care from the people at St. Mungo's was amazing. So they've got a system wrong. And I want to help change that system on how you deal with mental health in the area of depression. When you're high, yes, section in medication and so forth. Mm -hmm. but when you're low, the respite, the, the respite is the mm. key. Yeah, and I think as well, like having therapy, like adding therapy with medication. <laughs> no, like I'm gonna just plug that <laughs> having no. therapy, you know, alongside the medication can do well, absolute. Well, this is the reason. Wonders. This is the reason why um, um, I'm um, doing Heart International Group. Okay. Got five charities mm -hmm. along with your coaching ISI. Only ISI right because you know it's what's needed yeah it People, is you know because you know one thing about my I'm quite easier to um, talk about my issues because mm -hmm. I'm free of them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right I'm mm -hmm. free of my past yeah now the issue is is that people want to be free mm -hmm. of their past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and with your special coaching skills led by the Holy Spirit it it would do wonders for people mm. because people just need to be able to get over their past and understand their past and move on absolutely so with that being said like how has the love journey impacted your your day-to-day -day life how has it how has it impacted your work okay and okay okay i'll give you incidents i mean um i'm not angry you're not angry no. i'm glad you're not angry i'm very at peace you are and so the, the journey has delivered me from certain issues of being double-minded, unstable, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, being more focused. Mm. Because, you know, I've got a lot going on. I still have a day job yeah. at the Royal Kensington in Chelsea Borough. Right? And I love my job there. I love the people there. And I deal a lot with, obviously, my background is security, mm -hmm. CP. I used to look after Samuel Jackson and so forth hey, and so forth. Name so, dropping, name dropping. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I, used to, I used to drive <laughs> some very important people. You've driven Andre and Al. Yes. Very important yeah, person. And, 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 trust, and trust me, <laughs> people, I mean, people are going to know that you're a definite VIP. We, we did hit the road quite a lot, though, didn't we? Just yeah, churches, driving up and down churches, churches events. Yeah, ministering, just, I mean, just me and you by yeah, ourselves. Yeah, by ourselves. Amazing. On, on the, the road, road yeah. chatting and laughing yeah. and then giving people free, free CDs. Constantly. Yeah, we ain't gonna talk about the time you preach. We're not gonna talk about that. No, no, no that's the reason why. That's why me and pul <laughs> me and pulpit is not gonna be um, friends. I think for a we while. should tell them though yeah. about the time when Mark cast dirty bad word on the pulpit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in Nottingham and I was vexed. And he got. <laughs> and he... Yeah, and I, I I was vexed. He Andre. was vexed. I was set. I I had no sleep, and there was a lot of boasting going on. <laughs> And because I've been there and done it all, I I preach a word. Just say of the Lord. Ribstead. And just say of the Lord. And um. I don't want to laugh. Yeah, I um, did. We're not going to tell them what word she said, are we? No, no. Because I can't even remember. All I know is that you got a witness, because that person came and got some coaching. Maybe he needed coaching from after what I, you know, what I said. But yeah, I I, I do remember. I was vexed. I was set up. Right. I remember yeah, a lot of boasting and stuff was going on, and I was upset. And anyway, that church, the guy left that church anyway. So, oh right, yeah, there was reasons behind it. That's funny. And okay, so give us like one example of how the love journey has literally transformed your life. Like, give us one of the major. Okay, right. I for me, majorly, um, my wife. Okay. She's my everything. Oh. I can't do without her. Right and. We went through seasons where we thought we were going to make it together. Mm, On my side, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not her side, mm -hmm. because her vows are serious, mm. you know, for sickness and health. So you felt her. like he was ready to... Yeah, because I was causing her, I felt, 
I was causing her so much pain, mm. you know, and mm. I couldn't get over how I treated her and how I was when obviously I had no issues, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. things I'd said and done. And there was times I thought, you know what, God, I just want to be alone. Mm. I don't want to have anybody in my life because mm -hmm. I'm hurting so many people. Mm -hmm. Plus I'm hurt, hurting my family. Yeah. But the most important thing is my wife. She's everything to me, mm. right? Um, I can't do without her. She's my world, right? So I know that since the love journey, things have got better in my yard, right? That's big. In his marriage, guys. Yeah, yeah. My marriage is now on top. You know, wow. and I got a, I got a long way to go because there's healing yeah. going on yeah. with my wife, yeah. and um, I got a long way to go. Yeah. But um, but it's but the love journey has impacted your marriage yeah, in a made, really positive yeah, way. Yeah, it's made my mouth honey, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm honey at home. My mouth is full of honey. You know, I you know if I if my wife tells me yes, yes, no, no, you know, I'm just listening. Okay. And if I got nothing good to say, I keep my mouth shut. Wow. Yeah, okay, yeah. we I'm not, in no, I'm not in no argument. No, no, no argument. argument. No argument. Just a man of peace right now. I'm, I'm in peace. You are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know. You know. I, I know. I, I'm in a, the best place I've ever been. Yeah. I'm 56 years of age, right? 56. Yeah. 56. Right. And I'm in the best place. Melanin magic. Yeah, Melanin yeah. magic. I'm in the best place I've ever been. You know, really peaceful. Yeah. And it's, you know, that's all I want to live, bro. Wow, you know? 56, Ben. Yeah, 56, yeah. 56. I've been, you know. Look, you look great, you know. Yeah, and don't forget, I've been raving from I was, <laughs> I've been raving from I was 11 years old, you know. I used to sneak out and go blues. From 11. Mm. Raving from yeah. 11 years mm. old. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's. I used to sneak out and go blues, you know. At 11. Some blues in Bristol, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. At eleven, yeah, yeah. So you, big man you, you've you've come a long way. Yeah. Um. Just maybe turn up the light, mm -hmm. and do you want to put those on just to give it? Does it? Because it does it look a bit dark, or is it all right? Mm -hmm. Does it look all right? Mm -hmm. Are we all right? Mm -hmm. okay. I'll turn it off. So just a switch. I don't know why I bought in the raven from eleven. No, I think that's really great. It's I great. think it's great. Years old. Yeah, yeah this go, is great. I used this to. By great. the time I was sixteen, I would pop the. I mean, raving. We used to own a pub. We used to own blueses. You know, so I grew up musical. How is it so far, Dana? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Just remember, keep looking at the. Oh yeah, I know. I keep like looking that. down. So I'm looking at you. I know. Well, looking you're at you. looking at me, so yeah. you're all right. So, yeah, he's fine. But he's fine. But you're looking. I keep looking, looking exactly. down. Okay. Yeah, I used to go, um, I mean, you know what happened? I got to be honest, you know, I, you know what I haven't confessed to you? When I, after my... Can you hold that for? Yeah. It's recording anyway. Is it recording? Yeah. Oh, okay, so carry on. Sorry. You know, to be honest, Andre, when I look back at music, right? Yeah. When I, at the age of seven, music became my life. Mm. Because that was my, you know, I used to listen to Bob Marley and Gladys Knight and the Pips and all my mum's music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that helped... My situation. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know. Music is therapy, though, you know, isn't it? Yeah. And I love my music. Yeah. I'm a con, you know, before I'm a pe people would understand, I used to do put on dances, Eminem promotions. Mm -hmm. I used to bring sounds from London, yeah. you know, mystery and, you know, um, and all those people, touch of class. And I used to bring them to, um, to Bristol. Them where they're... To have a good time. Yeah. It wasn't about the money. Yeah. It was about, you know what, I want to have a good, good time, time in Bristol. Yeah. And so I was always. I, I I always love to see people enjoy themselves. Mm. Always have them. Yeah. You know, you 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 said, you know, from a young age, you know, you were in the clubs and all of this mm. stuff and then it's like you just you've you're fifty six and you've experienced so many different things. Like I know we can't get it all here, mm. but I know you will have another opportunity to hear Mark's testimony. Um we'll be having him live mm. on ISI. Mm. Um, in the coming weeks, we were mm. going to have him um, upcoming, but look out for um, the Mark ISI Zoom mm. link, okay? Because he will be on there yeah. and you'll be able to ask questions and hear Wonderful. his full testimony. Yeah. So we're really, really mm. excited to, you know, have you, you know, Mark. It's It's been this when you came to me when when you showed up for me i i, I was a little apprehensive because mm. i've i've never coached somebody with bipolar yeah. before and i was like lord this is huge like mm. i was like i don't know if i'm ready for this i don't know if i'm qualified for this mm. but i was like god if you brought me to it you're going to bring me through it and i really just felt like i just wanted to help you you know mm. i really just wanted to help you and i was like lord how 
can I help? And he said, well, I've given you what I've given you. You've got the love journey. Give him the love journey. Let mm. him do the love journey, you know? And I was like, Marky, you know? And then when you said you'd do it, I was like, oh, okay, was, this is you great. Know, you know, Andre, I was ready. Yeah. You know, before, I wouldn't have, it was just God's time. Yeah. To, to be able to talk about some stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. And to learn about myself as yeah. well, you know? Yeah. But one of the things is it, you have to be ready to do love, the love journey. Mm. Like, if you're not ready for the love journey... It, you can't receive. You can't receive. You can't receive. You've yeah. got to be in that space of humility to just receive the love. I mean, and it is love. And sometimes it's a bit of tough love. No, I mean, <laughs> I, you see, you see, I do get a little tough with Marky no, sometimes. No, you, know, you know what I mean? I can receive tough love. You can very right? well. Right? Yeah. And, and I like it tough, right? <laughs> you know? My wife has had to be tough with me at yeah, times. Yeah, so it's gentle. something you relate to. Yeah, I can relate to toughness, especially yeah. like when somebody comes and challenges me with tough scriptures. Yeah, yeah. Without, with no balance, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> it has Best to be tough. Tough scriptures with no balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. And yeah. No, a lack of love and yeah. empathy. Yeah. I'm a person that loves to encourage people. Me too. Right. And, yeah. And you are definitely an encourager because you encourage me. I mean, I left my job. I was doing seven till seven. Yeah. And I come home on a Tuesday encouraged, you know, to sit down with you and our hours were never an hour. It's always over an hour. Always over an hour. Yeah, always. always over there was an hour. There was never a time. He got when, the bill at the uh, end of the month, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was never a time <laughs> that it was because <laughs> we chat so much. We can't chat, is it? Yeah. We and I'd be chat. like, right, Mark. So yeah, yeah. gone over time, yeah, but you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. 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 But you know what? It was. It. I was so. I am so invested mm. in my clients. You know, I'm so invested in the journey. I'm so invested in you guys as individuals. So for me. It is that. If if that happens, then that's what happens. And I. It's wonderful. I, I think you know what I want to say to you is like, um, doing the seven, doing the journey. It's more than that. It's a relationship because I was able to make pick up the phone and say, "Look, I'm having an issue here, there," Absolutely. and just you were able to say something to me that would be enough. Yeah. And that means you know it's it's more than that. Yeah. You know, so I, I got more than I bargained for. Hey, that's, right? that's that's the God that we serve, though, right? He yeah. gives us more than than we can ask, think, or even imagine sometimes. And I tell you, I never imagined this. You oh, know, I never, yeah. I never imagined no. that. How many years later, 16 years or whatever it was later, uh, that I would be coaching you, I'd be your life coach? I've never had coaching. I've never had counselling. I've never had coaching. This is the first time, you know. Oh. And it's very important. It was just God's time. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. And, and just, I think just the way you responded to it, considering that you, like, because I asked the questions, have you ever, and you was like, no, you've never mm. had counselling, mm. you've never had coaching. And I was like, to just... The way you embraced the journey was just so amazing mm. for me. Mm. So what for you was the best part of the journey? You know, it's the deliverance. You know, people talk about, you know, I remember um, when people used to say, Mark, you know, you're going for some stuff, you've got a little deliverance meeting. Mm -hmm. That was frightening. Yeah. Right, absolutely yeah. frightening. Yeah. Nothing, if, to, nothing if you've to, never been to a deliverance meeting, yeah. boy. It's got yeah. nothing to do with God. It's to do with demons. <laughs> because I know demons, right? Mm. And there's people falling around and all that kind of stuff. Mm. That is not what people are looking for. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, deliverance and being delivered from your past is something that has to be gentle, mm -hmm. some tough love, mm -hmm. some understanding. It has to be led by people who. Are led by the Holy Spirit. And would you say you received that on the love journey? Oh my God. <laughs> because you see, the proof is what I do from now yeah. and until eternity. Come on. Right? Yeah. That is the proof. Yeah. What am I going to be delivering now yeah. in the next months and months coming up? Yeah. I believe that God wanted me to do this journey yeah. before he wanted to open certain doors for me. Wow. Because doors are being closed in my life now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be able to be open. Mm. Um, for me, the enemy is defeated. Mm -hmm. It's down to me if I want to allow him in my life. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the control that I have over the enemy is like, he's defeated home. Mm. He was defeated 2,000 years ago. Mm. And Jesus gave us the keys on how to, um, to, be, to, to defeat him. But he's defeated in my life. 
And so for me, um, the seven week course helped me to overcome that understanding, that deliverance to know that, you know what, he can't do nothing to me. Mm. He's tried his best. Mm. And there's nothing left. Mm. And, and you have peace now. Yeah, it's supreme peace. You know, so, when I say peace. Yeah, you're, 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 tell them about your sleeping. Like you're also. Yeah, my sleeping, uh, you know, I, for the, for the first time, I've been experiencing waking up with an alarm clock. I don't wake up with no alarm clock. I'm a man that I will wake up way before. I get to work half an hour before I start. Wow. Just to chill. Because and what I, time do you start? Um, it depends. Usually I, I, I've been doing a 12 hour shift okay. at work. Yeah, so you were starting like really early. So I get, up at, four, getting... I, I get up at four o'clock and prepare myself and go to work. So you were getting up before your alarm clock, before you started the journey? Yeah. Sorry. And I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> now you're being woken up by. Your alarm clock. You alarm <laughs> clock, alarm clock, and you know there's there's times where, you know maybe I feel like you know I think what is most important right is this, and my wife will be the witness, bear witness to this. I would have to sleep with the word, mm -hmm. or sleep with uh, prayer, in my ears, mm -hmm. just to, not sleep, but I call it rest. Mm -hmm. I just rest in the Lord mm -hmm. by putting on the word. Mm -hmm. Now I can, if I feel like I, if I feel like the Lord's saying, okay, pray for this individual or mm -hmm. pray for Africa, or, mm -hmm. because that's my prayers. My prayers are not limited. My prayers are everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. So I pray, mm -hmm. and if the Lord says to me, pray for a specific area, I can just stand. I can lie in my bed mm -hmm. and pray for my mind. Not have to exert myself. Mm. Not have to get up and start. Buying dinner and loot, no, no, none of that religious stuff. Yeah, I'm on about just I can pray and like be in still. Your heart and yeah, 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 in my heart, in my mind, yeah, I can just be still, yeah, know that He is God because it's already done, yeah, anyway, yeah, and just know. Yeah. And so I can lie in bed, not not disturbing my wife, yeah, because my main thing, yeah. I'm disturbing her sleep pattern. Yeah. I've been doing that for years. So, what wow. I can do now is just not disturb her and be still wow. in prayer wow. and not have to get up and listen to music or you know get up and read my bible i can just do it that way yeah and that's the difference and that's what the seven week of them i've never been able to do that wow so in seven weeks i yeah. can just lie in my bed and chill so before the seven weeks you weren't able to do that no, no, i'd have to get up or um so that's a significant like change. That's a, a significant thing to like experience. And you know, were there any other real significant changes that you noticed? Well, I just feel at peace. You feel at peace. I feel I feel at peace, and I'm not trying to do. I'm not trying to exert myself. You know, I really believe what God has put on my heart is already done. Yeah. I have to watch Him before I do it. That's awesome. Right, I do. I do believe that ways, and so I'm launching some stuff in the near future. Okay, that will talk, and you know, maybe you know, people understand. You know, what I've been saying for mm -hmm. the last. You know, when I had that vision in 2002, it took me, it got me secular because I was so high I couldn't come down. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't come down because I was trying to build. The kingdom, because I'm a kingdom man, in my own strength. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Trying to build it in my mind. And the attack of the enemy is trying to take my mind. Yeah. That's his, his fault. Yeah. To take my mind. And so, when you're sectioned, <laughs> for me, I've been sectioned five times. And it's, <laughs> it's the most greatest experience because I'm like a minister in this place. Okay, yeah. And I, I just witness. Yeah. You know, really, yeah. really witness. Yeah. And um, I see, you know, and I carry my Bible in there. I give away free music. I give away prayer, <laughs> um, prayer books. And you're in there as a patient? Yeah. Right, okay. It's evangelism for me. Okay. So you put me there and I worship. Yeah. You see, can you imagine I get food? Yeah. I get free meals a day. Yeah. And I got my music. And I can worship. And I can worship. And was that the one in Bristol that you was? was um, in London, I've, I've been in St. Anne's twice. I've been in 
the one in Bristol once. Yeah, times, but it's only been five, you know, five times. Five times. Yeah. So, just to, if, like, for people who haven't experienced the journey, like, what advice would you give to somebody who hasn't experienced the journey or hasn't, you know, who doesn't know about ISI and, and okay, uh, like, I mean, what is the love journey? What advice would you give or how would you let someone kind of know? I mean, I would let people know because it's on my website. Yeah, so everybody's going to know because on Heart Music Ministries and Heart International Group, you're there. Mm -hmm. Because I I believe that I've got a link page of 22 links that I went through absolute warfare mm. to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And those 22 links mean a lot to me. Mm. And your link is right in the mix of them because I want people to... It's not like I'm trying to say fast track. I'm not going to use the word fast track, but in seven weeks, mm. it's, imp it's important that people that have, have been struggling through the, throughout the whole of their life can have a seven week course and mm -hmm. be transformed. Mm. That for me, what's that worth? Yeah. What's that worth? Yeah. Come on, somebody who has gone through a difficult past yeah. is able to speak and get coached by somebody who's an absolute absolute gifted professional Thank now you. you know i can big you up but i'm gonna big you up for eternity right so yeah what you know I, you know for me personally um i will endorse you to the max mm, and you. tell everybody about what is it done for me mm. um, and most importantly what is it done for my marriage yeah. my queen yeah. right because the proof they say is in the pudding right Definitely is what i do pudding. you see after this wonderful interview right yeah testimony the proof is what i do from now on that's it right that's, that's the proof it. yeah yeah right people are yeah. gonna say okay after this yeah let's see let's see the proof yeah, yeah let's, let's see. see what he's doing we will we will revisit you in yeah. a few months time yeah. and yeah. see yeah. how you're yeah. doing yeah. and check in with you and, and what's been launched yeah. and what's been and am i a double-minded man anymore yeah. no so any advice for somebody who's watching this who's thinking about doing ISI coaching or wanting to do it what advice would you give them advice is that if you come on board when you do come on board because you will you'll be led to come on board just to be free and receive be free to open up and and, and follow your heart and let go of your past yeah. and um, now that's that's important I don't want to be free and open up your heart and let go of your past because yeah. that is one of the key things that holds us like not yeah. being present and bondage. you know and, and bondage. you know and and one of the things that i think we, we've spoken about is is about being here don't let your past make your present yeah you know, you Andre, know I live the, I live one day the, at a time yeah be present because even though I've got visions of great exploits for God yeah I'm living one day, day at, a time at a time because God has to do it yeah I'm just a vessel that God is using for such a time as now yeah you know yeah. and he knows the beginning he knows the end so That's what am right. I killing myself Ex exactly right. if he exactly. knows the beginning I can, you know you know I leave my house in the morning early yeah and I believe, I, I love the film Matrix. Oh, me too. It's one right? of my favourites. Oh, favourite film. Plug, right? plug. Right? I love Matrix. <laughs> you know. <gasps> what happened? Why did it happen? Huh? I don't know. Did the electricity run out? No. No. That was weird. Well, look. No. The TV's on. As soon as I said Matrix. Yeah. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> 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 we're we're going to talk about Matrix. Wait, wait, wait. Hold this light. It's like. The season's on then. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's on. That's strange. Do you know what? I probably thought it was going to happen. See, I need a light. That is strange. You know what? See, I need the light. I don't know why, but I've actually really enjoyed this. Yeah, it's good. You enjoyed it. It's, it's really very good. It's proper informative as well. Like, you're proper selling, the, not selling it, but like anyone that would listen to this. I've, Talia. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's definitely God. Because it's a blackout. It's blackout. You said them black me out. You see, you said Matrix. Wow. I, said, I said Matrix. They said, like, he's talking too much. They <laughs> said, he's talking too much. Well, I think, I think Andre <laughs> may have enough for <laughs> now, until next time. Is it? Yeah. They had Matrix, that's a cut off the whole grid. You know, Andrea. A few moments later. Yeah? Mm-hmm.
Okay, so Marky, you know, we've done our interview. The, 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 we've had a blackout, but we wanted to give you guys a, just a closing statement. You know, Mark, it's been amazing having you share your testimony with us today. And I know it's going to bless the ISI family. And just thank you so much for being just such an amazing client and friend. Any last words to the ISI family? No, it's been a pleasure. And I believe that what we've been able to do is what God wants. Absolutely. And that's the most important thing. Absolutely. We, we give God all the glory. All the glory goes yeah. to God. Amen. We love you guys. Stay tuned for this video and the next videos and check out our YouTube channel and all that good stuff and get loads and loads of testimonials. And yeah, we got loads more to come. ISI is going to take over the world. Get ready. Amen. Bye.